A four-day ceasefire has commenced in Gaza after nearly seven weeks of war, with Israel agreeing to pause the war temporarily. The deal includes release of 50 Israeli hostages and 150 Palestinians in the first batch. The deal also allows for the entry of more humanitarian convoys and relief aid into the Gaza Strip. Trucks carrying aid have begun entering Gaza by the Egyptian border, but this doesn't mean that the war is over. Israel's defense minister has vowed to continue the fight forcefully after the brief truce, saying he expects at least two more months of battle. So what will it take for Israel to stop its offensive in Gaza and if the war continues for two more months? What does it mean for the people of Gaza who have no houses, no medical facilities and no essential supplies? To take this discussion forward, we are now joined by Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, spokesperson of the Israel Defense Forces and former diplomat KC Singh. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner, let me begin by asking you about the arrangements that the IDF has made for the hostages who are going to be released by Hamas. Thank you indeed. And as we look, it's supposed to be happening as we speak uh, in these minutes. We are uh, waiting for the announcement that uh, hostages have been released. Who the hostages are, what are their ages, the women, the children <clears throat> that we are expecting to uh, arrive back in Israel. This is the process. Indeed, we have uh, completed our preparations, which include um, transport, but also medical services, initial medical services, and, and support of the individuals, of the people, of the women and children that are arriving or expected to arrive as we speak, as we speak throughout the show. Um, we will then hand, hand them off to professional medical uh, services in Israel, and this is uh, the initial process. In the meantime, we will be continuing to hold our positions in northern Gaza Strip and defensive uh, capabilities, but very strong uh, defensive capabilities in case of any hostilities uh, against us. <clears throat> right. I, I would also like to ask you what happens after this ceasefire is concluded? What about release of more hostages? Uh, what are the terms that Israel would be agreeable to? So, of course, these deliberations are taking place on the political level and on the diplomatic level and less with, to do with the IDF. But I can say what has been stated in the agreement that for every uh, 10 uh, hostages released, another day of ceasefire, of holding the fire, will continue. So from our perspective, um, one of the, our war goals was to return and bring home all of the hostages uh, it can be done through diplomacy. It can be done through military force. We are certain that it is only a result of the pressure that Hamas were under because of our military efforts that we are actually where we are today in an initial uh, release of hostages uh, being held by Hamas. The reality is one where, where our offensive activities will resume once the hostages are brought home. Um, we have two goals of this war. First of all, to bring the hostages home, but second of all, to make sure Hamas mm -hmm. never have the power of government ever again to undermine, jeopardize, threat, mm -hmm. abduct, murder, massacre Israelis ever again. This can't. This is basically why we are at war. The paradigm change has to be completed. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll request you stay on with us, Lieutenant Colonel Lerner. Let me uh, bring in Ambassador Casey Singh, uh, former Indian uh, diplomat. Ambassador Casey Singh. Uh, how do you think uh, Qatar and US were able to bring about this truce? And do you think following this, uh, there could be a conclusion of the war as well? Do you see that happening, Ambassador Casey Singh? No, let's be very clear. Firstly, it's not ceasefire, it's only a pause, as the Colonel explained. So it's only a humanitarian pause, which is what has been uh, uh, agreed upon. And the conditions are very clear because it's for four days. 50 hostages to be released, and that's what Hamas are doing. They're releasing one-fourth of, the host of those hostages today, that is 13, and they'll do it over the next, hopefully do it over the next four days. And as Colonel explained, uh, mm. if Israel says another 10 will buy another day, it remains to be seen whether Hamas will play that game and release them. And the other interesting thing is that there are no Americans in this. So Hamas obviously are keeping the Americans mm. back realizing that if you release the Americans, then the American pressure on Israel ceases. Uh, and they don't want that to happen. Mm. Now, the problem is that the objective is really, uh, Colonel's absolutely right. One of the objectives was to get the hostages back. 
but the other main strategic objective mm. was to destroy hamas now a lot of the infrastructure has been destroyed mm. but it's mainly in northern gaza now what happens after they have finished the operations here people have shifted almost 1.7 mm. million people have shifted to southern gaza and i'm sure some mm. of the hamas leaders have shifted there mm. because the tunnels must be connecting north to south mm. now if israel starts going there where mm. do those people go from there so obviously mm. there has to be some mm. clarity in the coming uh, days and months uh, where i'm sure israel knows that they mm. can't possibly be conducting the same mm. kind of operation in the south because then you'll be really wanting those people to go into gaza mm. which is what egypt egypt doesn't want and those people don't want so i think it's still a mm. gray area mm. uh, where israel will keep their mm. stated objectives in the open but in the meanwhile as the mm. pause continues the pressure will build up international pressure mm. that please continue and try turning mm. it into a ceasefire and see how a transition can be worked out mm. because there has to be an end game or what happens in gaza right. and who runs gaza because i don't think israel can or would like to run it indefinitely right uh colonel learner i'd also like to ask you about uh, some reports the defense minister of israel has been quoted by the guardian saying that this uh, war will continue of course for at least 2 months is that timeline uh you are working with the israeli forces are working with so our uh, goal is to change the security regime in the gaza strip so that there is no longer a threat against israelis um indeed as the minister pointed out there is a two month uh, framework but i would say from the military perspective we've not received a time limit there is no due date for this war effort uh, only a strategic goal that needs to be changed um so i would say you know, uh, we have to be very very strong and i agree with the uh, ambassador exactly what he says uh we have to keep our eyes on the ball and be very very cautious um with regard to the humanitarian situation that is why indeed we have increased the amount of trucks and humanitarian assistance going into gaza and today over 200 trucks are expected to be brought in with medical supplies um food supplies uh, shelter mm. fuel and and cooking gas in order to alleviate some of the difficulties it's been from the outset we've been saying very very clearly the people of gaza are not the enemy of israel it is it is hamas that are the enemy of israel and i would say hamas in its i would its extreme exploitation of the civilian arena are also the enemy of the people of gaza i think it would be benefit everybody mm. that hamas ceases to control the gaza mm. strip hamas ceases to exist as a governing authority in the gaza strip Hamas ceases to have the powers of government mm. to build a terrorist army that infiltrates into Israel to build a a capability an aerial mm. capability to launch uh, bombs from drones and suicide drones and indeed to utilize the civilian mm. arena such as hospitals and and other protected locations that they have done over the last 16 years of their government in a, in an extreme abuse of mm. uh, any humanitarian human i would say basic human norms um we expect that the international mm. humanitarian organizations but also the international community as a whole and i would say the who should be leaving mm. leading the 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 uh, the parade or the charge on this issue the world health organization till date 7 mm. weeks into this war have yet to say any con- uh, any word any comment about hamas's abuse of hospitals mm. this is a, an issue of of dire concern mm. because in put in putting its terrorist mm. infrastructure beneath hospitals they are putting all of the people in gaza right. all of the most i would say most vulnerable people in gaza at risk we are fighting a a merciless organization a merciless military a merciless uh, entity that has mm. no regard for human life israeli or palestinian mm. right uh ambassador casey saying coming to you when it comes to uh, the larger challenges of this becoming a larger regional conflict uh where are we with that challenge do you think that uh, challenge still remains in a big way well so far hezbollah has been only uh you know inflicting pin pricks at the northern border of israel but the presence naval presence of the american fleet uh has acted as a deterrent they have not really boldly tried to enter or come with any great force and start a confrontation because they know the cost will be heavy for them uh that is why it's important that if the mm. pause is extended then hezbollah's will should not be tested 
uh, because if it goes beyond a certain limit, you don't mm. know. They may take a choice. I'm sure the Iranians are also keeping an eye on it, also consulting with them. Uh, mm. But at some particular mm. point, if the Arab public opinion, if the mm. street, Arab street starts putting pressure, then Hezbollah may also be forced mm. into it. Though so far, they have only symbolically mm. fired some missiles and Israel has retaliated. But it's not been a, mm. a, a really calculated attack on the northern frontier of Israel to distract the Israeli army. Uh, mm. But one thing is important, you're asking me the role right. of Qatar. The head of the political organization, uh, Mr. Haniya, he is based in Qatar. Mm. And there were reports that the military head, head of the military wing, was based in Hamas. And what happened, the attack on October 7 mm. may have been engineered by the military wing without really the political wing having full control over it or having a say in it. Uh, mm. So they might have been vetoed and the decision mm. was taken in Hamas. So the political wing is very much there. But if this uh, pause has been accepted, that means the political wing is getting some traction back. And that is a good sign because it remains to be seen how much they can control. They can exercise control over the Hamas, which is in existence because Israel needs, uh, needs also to show to their own people that their objectives are achieved. And they won't be achieved if there is no clarity on uh, who's going to be running Hamas and whether the people who are running the military operation mm. from Hamas in Gaza have been yeah. decapitated or not decapitated. Uh, so there is a window of opportunity. Okay. It's My very narrow question. as yet. Uh, but it's always good to have right. a pause, always good to start with prisoners being uh, exchanged and hostages being handed back. And as the colonel said, if it's Definitely. 10 prisoners and one day, the almost 200 mm. prisoners will be left after four days. So we are looking at 20 days. Mm. Uh, if this can carry on, I right. don't think Hamas will work to hand over all the prisoners unless they know there are guarantees that there will be an end to the war. Because mm. they think that uh, those hostages I guess that will what giving them some They protection. will now be working towards. I guess that's what where the negotiations will now shift. My final question to Colonel Lerner. Uh, Colonel Lerner, very quickly, there have been reports today how there was an Israeli battalion. Uh, there were women officers there, sentries on duty, who had observed training by Hamas terrorists, how they, uh, they were seeing that there were training camps, there were training of taking hostages going on on the other side of the border. They had also sent these communications to their high-ups in the intelligence establishment. How would you react uh, to these reports? Yeah, thank you. First, I'd like to comment on what Casey Singh was saying about Hezbollah. Hezbollah, over the last seven weeks, has uh, escalated the situation almost every day with um, several uh, rockets, anti-tank guided missiles, uh, sniper fire, machine gun fire. Uh, we've been very uh, pr uh, defensive on our border with Lebanon, taking up defensive positions and making sure that we have do not get dragged into another front uh, with uh, Hezbollah in, in the north. We've evacuated almost all of the people that live in a five-kilometer radius from the border, including from the town of uh, Kiryat Shmona. Uh, our defensive posture has actually uh, defined the current staging ground for that uh, battle. We are responding every single time that Hezbollah are attacking us, but it is a defensive posture nevertheless. Regarding your question, indeed, there are severe questions that need to be asked in the aftermath of this war, but it will they will be asked after the war. We are looking into it. We will investigate ourselves. And those that need to be held accountable will be held accountable. It is a very serious failure of our system, obviously. And uh, if these uh, claims are accurate, then, then uh, there is also responsibility that needs to be taken for this. Um, the situation is today we are focused on the war fighting. There will be time for an investigation. All right, uh, there will be time for investigation after the war comes to an end. Thanks for joining us, Colonel Lerner and Ambassador Casey Singh. We've run out of time. We are taking a short break, but up next, uh, a Qatar court has accepted an appeal filed by the Indian government against the death penalty granted to eight former Indian Navy personnel. A discussion when we are back. <laughs>